name is Abbas Ahmad bin Muhammad Zudin and today I will be explaining about a vacuum flask. So as we know, a vacuum flask keeps the temperature of a liquid the same. So in order to make a vacuum flask, we need to minimize heat transfer uh, from the liquid into the environment. So there are three main ways in order heat can transfer, which is convection, conduction and radiation. For the first way, which is convection, we use a glass as the inner side of the vacuum flask uh, as glass is a good insulator of heat. So we can prevent the convection of heat uh, between the flask. The second one is conduction. Uh, two bodies and between the bodies is a vacuum region. So we can we can reduce uh, conduction in the flask, and for the radiation, we silver the inner surface so that the radiation is reflected back into the liquid. The material used to make a vacuum flask is very essential in order to minimize the heat loss. And I've been questioning a lot who is the first person to invent. Less than 1.2% of carbon and other alloy elements. Stainless steel has two main properties which are electrical resistivity and also thermal conductivity. Stainless steel has high electrical resistivity compared to materials like copper or aluminium, which can ensure the safety of uses by preventing from the electrical leakage. And also, stainless steel has moderate thermal conductivity, which allows the transfer of heat from the heating elements to the water. Stainless steel cattle are typically fabricated by shaping, welding on and also finishing stainless steel sheets. Stainless steel cattle main components such as body, lead and also heating element bits are formed from stainless steel. Stainless steel is better than carbon steel as it is corrosion corrosion resistant due to the formations of passive oxide and on its fluids. When stainless steel is exposed to the oxygen in the atmosphere, a thin and invisible passive oxide layer primarily composed of chromium oxide form on, on its surface. The oxide layer acts as a barrier. Moreover, there are various bits of stainless steel with different compositions and altered properties. Therefore, I feel like I want to learn more and explore about the specific bits and also the applications of itself. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Adrian and this is my eyeglass cases. It is a semi-hard eyeglass case. Uh, it is mainly made of molded EVA material, which is ethylene vinyl acetate, uh, a copolymer made of ethylene and vinyl. It contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So it is popular material for injection molding due to its softness and flexibility. So it will ensure the safety of your eyeglass so for the zipper it is made of alloy metal contains of aluminium nickel brass and other things so of course there are better types of cases out there such as a hard eyeglass case because hard eyeglass case is made of some common material hard material such as gold silver and aluminium which is why most of people prioritize the hard eyeglass cases for more protectiveness. But nonetheless, uh, I want to know more about how I can make semi-hard eyeglass cases is as good as the hard eyeglass cases. Because for me, this is a better option for someone like me because it is easier to bring. So yeah. that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Hi. My name is Amin Shabir Aziz, so here is a car. But today we want to focus in more on the car wipers blade. So here is the blade. Okay, what is the material that used to construct the wiper blade? The blade is usually made out of is either uh, silicon or rubber. So in my case, this car used rubber as the wiper blade. Why rubber? So 
Rubber is actually a material made up of a covalent bond between two carbon atoms. It is very malleable and also very durable. It also has low melting point and boiling point. However, uh, if you leave the car exposed to the hot sun uh, during a day, it will not get uh, melt. But everything that is good also must have some disadvantages. As we drive the car daily and we use the wiper while raining, it causes the wiper blade to become uh, to tear off and become thin because of the friction between the wiper blade and also the wind uh, screen of the car. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Hi, it's Aleko. My name is Aisa. So, these are gold earrings. I got these from my mother like years ago. So, uh, on the periodic table, they are uh, Aurum, which is number 79. And these, and they are um, in, chem in terms of chemical properties, these are transitional metals. But in physical properties, they are like, soft, they are soft, malleable, and pretty ductile. So to get the so to get this gold itself, uh, you need to extract it from you need to extract it from a mine, which will then go through a series of process called chemical bleaching to get the gold bar. The gold bar. This gold bar will, will then be shipped off, get verified and stamped, which will then be used to make jewelry. So to from the gold to the jewelry itself, you uh, the most common process will be gold casting. So gold casting is melting down the gold bar into a molten gold liquid state. To a molten gold liquid state. So from there on, it will be poured into a wax. This one. so once it has been casted and cooled down, it will then be shaped. Give it will then be shaped to get the finished product. So from so gold itself is prone to scratching. They are prone to scratching and collecting dirt and grime. Then tungsten would be the, the best one. It has a high scratch resistance. So these things can actually be cleaned by uh, two, two ways via soapy water or ultrasonic. The, so it depends on whether you want to do it personally or professionally. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Amira Hafiza Binti Muhammad Hashim with the metric number 2312606. Today I will share with you about Lego. So here I have a Lego piece. Lego bricks are made from ABS, a thermoplastic polymer with low melting point, chemical resistance, and environmental friendliness. They are created through a highly automated injection molding process using high temperatures and large equipment. ABS granules are vacuumed into storage silos, melted, and injected into molds to create bricks. Once cooled, pieces are stamped onto bricks and assembled into minifigures. LEGO initially made its bricks from recycled plastics but withdrew from its Bottles to Bricks project which uses PET materials initiative due to environmental concerns. The company decided to stick with its current fossil fuel based materials while continuing to search for more sustainable alternatives. Despite this, LEGO remains committed to sustainable practices and aims to maintain a hospitable planet. One question that I have while doing my research is if there is any material that can make it safer if we accidentally swallow the tiny Lego pieces since there are kids that play with Lego as well. So that's all from me. Thank you. Hello, my name is Akif Amir Hamka. So today I'm going to talk about materials around me. And today I have here is a eraser that is made out of rubber. So the chemical properties of this eraser is usually made out of uh, PVC or uh, aeroscope polyvinyl chloride and there are other additives uh, that make the eraser more stable pvc also provides a flexibility into this eraser so that it doesn't break while we were using it so this is an example uh, it is elastic okay so how do they make an eraser so firstly they will gather all the materials such as pvc and other additive and then compound the whole thing to make the right uh, amount of eraser and then put it into a molding so that you get the desired shape of an eraser that is usually a rectangle shaped so there is a better alternative than this usual daily life use of eraser that is a dust free eraser so it does minimize uh, the amount of dust when you scrub off the graphite on top of your paper so that it doesn't make any mess 
So what am I curious about the material inside the rubber is how can it not crumble and mold um, even after we keep it for so long. So that's it. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Azam Muzaffar. The material around me that I choose is ceramic cup. The reason I choose ceramic cup because I usually use it every day to make some drinks. Uh, right now, I'm going to explain about ceramic cup. A ceramic cup is a sturdy and hard vessel made from clay that bake at high temperatures. People like this cup because they look nice and can be used for hot and cold drinks and keep beverages warm. Especially for people that like to drink coffee, they usually like to drink warm coffee. So this ceramic cup are very suitable for them. Ceramic cup come in different shapes and sizes, often with decorative design and protective glaze. Such as this cup, it has a decorative design and has a protective glaze. To make it last longer, you will find them in many homes, cafes and restaurants, offering a practical and stylish choice for enjoying drinks. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. My name is Khalil Tulakim and the object of my choice is skipping rope. This skipping rope is made of polyvinyl chloride plastic or as known as PVC which are derived from salt and also oil. What are the properties of PVC? It is less rigid, has high impact strength and it is also easier to extrude or mold. How does PVC is made? It is made through the electrolysis of salt water which produces chlorine which is combined with ethylene obtained from oil to form vinyl chloride monomer. And then the molecules of vinyl chloride monomer are polymerized to form PVC resin to which appropriate additives are incorporated to make customized PVC compound. Why this PVC is better than other plastics? Some notable characteristics of PVC includes its high density which is make it much more denser than other plastics relatively very lightweight compared to metals, hardness and durability, outstanding tensile strength and resistance to environmental and chemical degradation. Myself have so much to learn about this PVC material and I really would like to know the full details of manufacturing process of PVC from zero till the end. Everyone, I'm Ilamadi Suresh. So this is dumbbell. Dumbbell is made of several materials such as rubber, metal and neoprene. The head of the dumbbell is made of cast iron or steel which is rubberized and then coated with neoprene. But some of the dumbbells are made of fully cast iron. The material used is very strong and dense such as cast iron because it is helped to maintain a very high density but low friction. It is often then molded into a shape during the manufacturing and packed with such a coating like a urethane or very thin layer of rubber to reduce the risk when it drops on the floor. For the handle part, it is mainly used with steel and iron as it is the best choice compared to plastic because less slippery. So as we exercise, we produce sweat and there's less chances for the dumbbell to drop. So from here, I have learned that even though dumbbells are made from very strong material like cast iron or steel, it should be coated with friction reducing materials such as rubber to protect the dumbbells inner material. Either thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi, I'm Parvana and this is my plastic headbands that I use every day. It can be made in various shapes, sizes and materials. Plastic headbands are usually made of uh, polypropylene and other plastic headbands can be made from a variety of materials including silicone, polyurethane and EVA. It is a good material for elastic hair growth and anti-UV. It is also considered more lightweight and more durable.
Polypropylene is a thermoplastic polymer used in a wide variety of applications. It is produced via chain growth polymerization from the monomer propylene. Polypropylene is usually considered safe for humans. It is considered the safest of all plastics. Another properties of polypropylene such as uh, semi-rigid, translucent, good chemical resistance, tough, good fatigue resistance, and good heat resistance. It is made by transform plastic materials such as recycled plastic bottles or other upcycled materials and then cutting and shaping the plastic to decorate and embellish the headbands. Plastic headbands are often cheap since plastic can be manufactured cheaply. But while they are cheaper than metal headbands, they are still quite durable. These plastic headbands are great for young children since they are oftentimes uh, more comfortable and lightweight. Last but not least, what I want to learn more about this material is how it is a good chemical resistant and how uh, it is a good heat resistant. That's all from me, thank you. Assalamualaikum, I'm Farisha and this is my bracelet. It is made from gold. Uh, it is made by four steps. Uh, the first step is the gold will undergo crushing and grinding to break it down into small pieces. And next, the gold is treated with chemicals which is cyanide solution to extract the gold. Now, the extract gold ore is not yet in its pure form. It will go through a refining process to remove impurities and achieve the desired level of purity um, by smelting or electrolysis. Uh, lastly, once the gold been refined, a uh, skilled artisan used various techniques such as casting, soldering and polishing to create intricate designs and shape. Um, for me, gold is better in the making of this bracelet because uh, gold is most uh, non-reactive metals so it won't react with oxygen or other chemicals meaning it won't tarnish, rust or perish. Uh, so, for the conclusion, I would like to learn more about this school, uh, whether it can make other things rather than jewelry. Thank you. Hello, Assalamualaikum. My name is Imran and this is my watch, T-shirt watch. The T-shirt watch is made from uh, some carbon, carbon that we call carbonox. Carbonox is a product. Product uh, is uh, consists of a carbon powder with a certain percentage. And how the this shot is made is with a they are produced by a part before the assembly. And the assembly the assembly lines for analog movement, which is a is shaped from. Japan to all, all over the world and then they assemble to the part by the liquid hand since the part is very tiny at, at in there and then they test the product durability by, by the water resistance, vibration test and underwater button under, underwater button test and lastly they are ready to sell and why they are not from the metal. For me, this uh, my opinion. Opinion. Uh, why this shop not made from metal? Because this shop is product that produce to the consumer yeah, like me who like to wear is aggressive, aggressively and. We like to do uh, extreme, extreme activities, and its endurance is very good. And I, I like it, and that's all for me. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. I am Iyad, and currently I am sitting on uh, artificial grass. Uh, so basically, uh, most of the manufacturers will use polypropylene and polyethylene, uh, mix them both to make this artificial grass. So let's talk about uh, the, pro the properties of artificial grass. Let's go. Polyethylene and polypropylene are used as the base material of artificial grass because they are durable, they are water resistant and also has natural look and feel.
or I could say the final product of artificial grass is almost completely same with the natural grass. And these materials also can withstand uh, outdoor, outdoor conditions and also receive fading uh, from UV exposure so that this artificial grass can last for a long period of time. So I want to learn more on what material can be used to replace this polypropylene and polyethylene uh, to make artificial grass because what comes to my concern is about the microplastic waste in the future. So that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. I'm Muhammad Zaimuddin Bazadi. Today, let's step into the world of keycaps. So, why keycaps? Well, for us gamers, Choosing the right keycap can make a huge difference to stick our performance during intense gaming session. So let's talk about polybutylene, terabatolate, or PBT. The main material used in keycaps is a type of thermoplastic polymer. It's sanitized through the polymerization of terabatolic acid or its dimethyl ester with 1,4-butane diol. It offers three main benefits: durability, texture and a unique typing experience. The durability, it resists abrasion, heat, and chemical lasting longer than other plastics. So for the texture, PBT has a slightly rough feel, providing better grip and staying cleaner over time. So for the sound and feel, typing on PBT keycap gives a deeper, fuller sound and a satisfying tactile experience. So why we use PBT keycaps instead of metal keycap? So PBT keycaps are more resistant to heat and yellowing maintaining their color and texture for longer periods unlike metal keycaps that might change appearance or color with belongs. In short, PBT keycaps reign supreme for gamers that are durable, comfortable and offer a unique typing feel perfect for those intense gaming sessions. So that's all from me. Thank you. Hi Assalamualaikum, my name is Adi and the object that I choose for my assignment is this very note. This panel is made of polypropylene, so the process goes from the process polypropylene will be uh, will be stem with the correct amount and then it will embed with the correct hologram and the last process it will be cut before it is, it is ready to be used. So uh, why not other material why we use polypropylene? Polypropylene have almost the same properties and character as the PET, well-known PET that we use in the bottle. So in order, in order to have a great uh, material for currency, for cash, it is must be fungible, durable, portable, and not wearable. And this PP satisfy all of the all of the need for a great cash. It is light and tough. It is resistant to abrasion, heat, chemical, and chemical. It is very important because our past experience with the last ringgit which we made of from paper is very bad. Uh, it is very wearable and it is easy to wear and easy to be damaged. But still, polypropylene PP is not the best option because we can still see the crease and the tear at most of the money. So there is still room for improvement in the material used for currency. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Aizad bin Muhammad, and here I am today. I'm gonna to talk about this water dispenser. Uh, this water dispenser is made in a factory, and it is made of ABS. It's all, all it's called as alkyl nitrile butadiene styrene. So, uh, ABS. I do think that ABS is such a good material for making this water dispenser because it can handle the good impact, pressure, and heat. So if we put hot water in this tank, it can easily channel the water through the tank to the top without melt. So uh, I do think that uh, ABS is a good material. Uh, so what if we use uh, LHD plastic for making uh, this water dispenser? And uh, I do not recommend it because it can, it can't uh, handle heat and pressure. It can get break easily if you put uh, if you want to channel the water from the tank to the top. So uh, other than that, this water dispenser has called a tube. This tube can this tube is made from silicon and can because silicon is a uh, soft and it can easily adjust the position. So this did make the easier thing. Other than that, my water dispenser is made of electronic device, so it can 
uh, this past door till which just push the button on the top like this and uh, lastly I want to more I want to learn more about this for water dispenser how we can make it better and better with other combination that's all for me thank you hello my name is Sadi Fafizi today I will talk about carbon arrow let's take a look at carbon arrow properties uh, carbon arrow are known for their lightweight and sturdy nature. It provides a perfect balance for accuracy and speed for arrow. Moving on to fabrication, this arrow craft using advanced technology. There are the layers of carbon fiber to create more durable and high performance projectile. This manufacturing process ensures a consistent and reliable product. And then I will talk about the competitor. While traditional wood arrow have their place, the quality and performance of carbon arrow have made them a top choice among archers. It's lighter, faster, and has better durability. And finally, my take about carbon arrow, I love to explore more about their potential application in extreme condition, like pushing this arrow to their limits in various environments for example i shoot the arrow on the rock how do they hold it that is something that i'll be eager to learn more about it that's all for me thank you assalamualaikum my name is hazim and this is my metal calligraphy pen so this calligraphy pen stand with two parts which is the tip and the holder the tip is from stainless steel metal meanwhile the holder made from plastic which is polymer so the properties for the tip is stainless steel which you will not be rusty, corrosion resistant and high durability which is very high. For the holder which is polymer it is like this which will make the pen top portability and comfortable to use how it is made. So for the stainless steel it will undergo a few process like research for the basic material, melting, primary steel making, secondary steel making, alloying, casting, hot rolling and heat treatment. For the holder which polymer more specific is polypropylene will undergo polymerization. For the tip, why we choose stainless steel, it is because the tip will not rusty since the tip will always exposed to the water since we will always wash the tip with water after use. The high durability and hard tip also will not erode it since it will slide along a lot of paper. For the holder, the polymer is the most suitable since it will create the lightweight and enough durability. Meanwhile, the other material will not balance in the lightweight and durability. For example, there is wood holder which is not suitable since it it is lightweight but don't have enough durability to sustain. There is two things I want to know more about my item. First, is there any metal that we can use to replace the tip material and how long time it will take until the tip eroded, corroded or it will permanently itch? Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Lukman Hakim bin Muhammad Shafi'i and this is my stainless steel fork. Stainless steel metal is an iron alloy that resists rust and corrosion. Um, stainless steel is formed when raw materials like chromium, nickel, silicon and others are melted together. It may contain elements like carbon, metal and other non-metal and in addition a minimum of 11% chromium content. The question is how does this material can resist corrosion? Actually the chromium content um, create a passive layer that can shield the metal and also self-heal in the presence of oxygen. Okay, next, what is the properties of the stainless steel? Um, first of all, it is extremely corrosion resistant, resistance and also next, it is also resistant to fire and heat. And lastly, um, it have high degree of durability and impact resistance. Fun fact, the stainless steel is not only beautifully shiny and glossy but it also amazingly versatile and the most important thing for me is that it will never oxidize or rust. Uh, that's all for me, thank you. Assalamualaikum, I'm Nabi Hakim and this is my exhaust cover. Uh, it made from a polymer called polyurethane. Uh, polyurethane is an extremely versatile isomer that used in countless applications especially in automotive industries. Uh, this polymer has a wide range of hardness and have high uh, resistance to abrasion, cutting and tearing. Uh, 
uh, it also uh, characterized by flexibility resistant to aging and weather condition so it will last long until 20 or 30 years uh, for alternative poly epoxides or well known as epoxy is the best material that can replace polyurethane and i really want to know what the outcome if we use another method uh, except from molding to make this poly polyurethane material that's all for me thank you Assalamualaikum, my name is Mamai Taufik. Today I want to talk about this. This is called thumb ring, which is normally used in archery for thumb protection when you pull the, the string. And normally it is made from leather, which you can get from animals like cows, uh, sheep, goats, and etc. We take the uh, skin from the animal and then the po in the process of thinning and brushing and finishing and you will get this uh, type of uh, this leather so basically in archery it is very useful because uh, useful for protection because it leather is known as high tensile strength and also resistant to tear which means when you pull the string it cannot break easily and also you can uh, safely to protect your finger that's all for me thank you very much hi i'm zahim and this is anti slip sock these anti slip socks are designed to provide grip and prevent slipping on the various surface the material used for these anti slip sock are typically include first cotton why because it's soft comfortable and breathable the cotton often used for the body of the socks. Second one is elastin, spandex or lycra. This stretchy material helps the sock maintain a snug fit on the foot. The third one is rubber or silicon grids. The source of anti-slip socks are equipped with rubber or silicon pattern, dots or line that enhance traction on smooth surface. The second last is nylon. The nylon nonce for its durability and may be used in the composition of the sock to enhance strength. The last one is polyester. Polyester is sometimes included for moisture wicking properties helping to keep the feet dry. How this anti-slip sock is made is okay the overview is involve several steps including selecting materials knitting and weaving, adding grips, and finishing. That's all from me about this anti slip socks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mira and this is my Apple Pencil. So the outside layer is made from polypropylene which is a polymer and the inside layer is made from aluminium and also lithium which act as battery. So how is this made? Firstly, they designed the shape of the Apple Pencil which is called Industrial Designing. Next, the circuit board is made in the manufacturing process. And the exterior of this pen was created by the process of plastic modeling. Then the metal is added by undergoing metal CNC process. Before and after assembly, the component go through a total of two quality inspections to make sure it works. Lastly, it is packed and sealed, ready to be used by consumer like me. So, why not other material? Why polypropylene? Because polypropylene is a type of thermoplastic that is recyclable, unlike thermosets. Once it's shaped, it cannot be melted again. So, I want to learn more on which component can replace lithium as batteries since lithium production is not environmentally friendly and it production costs a lot of money and time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Adana Kamila Binti Nasharuddin. So I will present about silicon lamp. So silicon is an elastomer which is have the rubber like material. It consists of silicon, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in its composition. So um, why I think the silicon lamp have the ideal properties to be a silicon lamp because uh, of its water high water repellence, high flexibility and also high high heat resistance. Okay. 
Sam is also a highly robust material that offer an excellent environmental resistance towards ozone, UV light and also oxidation. Silicon material will be the perfect material for lamp because um, if we use glass nowadays, uh, if we throw it, it will shatter easily and it also have a specific heat temperature that it can withstand but I'm curious about this material because I think silicon will be the perfect material for any kinds of application in lamp because as we can see today's um, there are many kinds of silicon application towards the lamp such as the stadium and also the lamp under the tunnel of cowies Assalamualaikum, my name is Safia. Right now, I want to talk about this bracelet. This bracelet was made from titanium. Did you know that titanium is one of the hardest metal on earth? Well, it is, and it's also much stronger than gold, silver, platinum, and at least three times the strength of steel. The making process of this bracelet started with the process of extracting titanium from its ore, which includes four major steps, reduction, consolidation, melting, and mill. After undergo several processes, the pure titanium that we get will be cut and shaped according to the desired design. To create the specific components of this bracelet, the cut pieces will be formed or molded. The last step will be the surface finishing such as polishing, coating, and brushing to enhance its appearance and texture. It's fashionable and trendy to wear titanium jewelry nowadays. Not only it's durable and has high corrosion resistance, but also famous for its anti-rust feature. As compared to gold, titanium is the best choice in jewelry industry because there are people out there who are allergic to gold jewelry. And since titanium is 100% hypoallergenic, it's very suitable for people with sensitive skin like me. But why does titanium is much cheaper than gold? Well, it's because titanium is more abundant and has less demands as compared to gold. On a final note, I still want to know more about the use of titanium in other industries as well, such as marines, aerospace, and medical industry. That's all from me, and thank you for watching my video. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Izzati, by Tizan Rundin, and today I'm going to talk about glossy photo paper. This is an example for a glossy photo paper. And glossy photo paper is a paper that coated with polymer coating that is typically a thin layer of resin or polymeric material such as polyethylene. And as we know, polyethylene has a properties that is flexible, transcoolant, waxy, weatherproof, and good chemical resistance. So it was very good to use as a coating for the photo paper. And it will produce a smooth and reflective surface which enhance the color saturation and sharpness of the printed photos. So how it is made? Coating is applied to the paper using process called calendaring or super calendaring, which involves placing paper through a series of rollers which are high pressure to smooth and polish the surface. And glossy paper come up with two coated and uncoated, but coated photo paper come with more excellent quality. That's why it is better. And I wonder if this cutting method will be replaced with more advanced method in the future to produce better quality photo. Hi, I am Diana and this is my paper clip. Okay, so paper clips are made of steel due to its mechanical properties and we normally use carbon steel as it offers a balance of uh, strength, ductility, and affordability. Okay. Sometimes manufacturers may use stainless steel or other alloy steel for specific properties. Stainless steel contains chromium which will form a protective oxide layers to prevent rust and corrosion. Then how to make paper clips? Steel wire is cut in specific length and then the steel wire is bent using machine to form a double loop shape like this. So the deformation process is all because of the ductility. Ductility is the ability to deform without fracturing. And some of the paper clips undergo heat treatment like annealing to relieve stress and improve the ductility. There are paper clips that are made of plastic, but it is not as common as steel because paper clips are made of plastic 
doesn't have the same strength as steel. So they can bend more easily and will cause paper to slip and doesn't be held securely. Lastly, I want to learn more about the treatment and coating of these paper clips to enhance the properties like corrosion resistance or appearance. Okay, that's all from me. Assalamualaikum. Hi, I'm Umaira. So on my hair right now is stainless steel hair clip. Let's first look at what goes into stainless steel. Steel contains carbon, nickel, and chromium. For steel to be stainless, it should contain 10.5% of chromium. To make this hair clip, first thing first, it should begin by creating the raw material of this stainless steel. Stainless steel is tempered and heated about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The hair clip cast bead is generally obtained from latin molten steel solidified in a mold. Once this happens, it removes, cleanses, and polish. After that, it can be assembled further if need be. Stainless steel is the best material for making this hair clip compared to this normal metal hair clip because compound in this stainless steel increases its durability by creating an invisible top layer. This layer prevents oxygen from reacting with the material in the metal, which in turn prevents rusting. Because for metal, they doesn't have that layer, so they are susceptible to rust and corrosion when exposed to moisture or certain chemicals. So lastly, this thing really make me want to learn more about more interesting application of stainless steel in our daily life. So that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, my name is Suru Ain and this is my clothes hook. This hook was made by stainless steel. Do you know stainless steel was a high metal alloy because it consists more than 11% of coronium in it. It also consists of few other metal elements like nickel and molybdenum. Some properties of the hook is durable and hard to deform. For example, when you try to put pressure on this hook, it doesn't bend and stay at original shape. So this hook can hold a lot of clothes at the same time. Stainless steel also makes the hook resistant to corrosion when being exposed to different types of surrounding. Next, the process of making this hook is not easy because we need to melt down the stainless steel with the temperature of 1400 Celsius. When it fully melts down, we pour it into a mold to let it cool down before we shape it into this shape. Now, let's compare this stainless steel hook with other type of hook, for example, plastic hook. Compared to stainless steel, plastic hook tend to grow easily because it cannot hold a lot of weight at the same time. The different design of both of this hook make stainless steel hook more preferable than plastic hook because the sticker tend to fall off easily. At the end of the presentation, make me want to learn more about uh, stainless steel because I want to know what type of product can be made by this material. That's all for me. Hello, my name is Safwan and today I want to talk about staples. So what are the properties of this material, which is this, staple? So staples contain a steel, which is iron and carbon, and it is plated with zinc plated steel wire, and some has plastic as the material, but zinc and steel is still the most commonly used material for these staples. But how is it made? The fabrication process is fascinating. The thin wire undergoes precision cutting, shaping, and imaging for this U shape that we know of. And of course, specialized machinery is used to handle this process. So, why people should choose staples? In a world of paper clips and binder clips, staples provide a more permanent and secure binding when it is needed. And the clinching mechanism that it provides provides a steady grip or larger stack of paper just like this. As we move towards a sustainable future, I'm intrigued by the potential for environmentally friendly alternatives. Imagine staples made from biodegradable materials. How much can we reduce for environmental impact? Moreover, could staples evolve with technology? For me, I believe innovation in staples technology might just redefine our expectations in the modern office environment. So, that's it for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Shakil Azimdah, I'm based in Indy. So, this is my helmet visor. These visors are typically made from polycarbonate, which offer durability, impact resistance, and clarity. 
So the first property of this visor is visibility. It will provide a clear field of vision while protecting against UV rays, glare and harsh weather conditions like rain or snow. So next, how this visor is made? This visor is made through a process called injection molding which need three following steps. First, heating and shaping. Second, cooling and forming. And the third one is trimming and finishing. So this visor is good for our protection because it will protect our eyes and face from the wind, debris, insect and UV rays. It also can reduce the risk of eye injuries and discomfort during ride. And next, it also can make rider more comfortable because it will help to reduce wind noise and prevent the eyes from watering due to wind exposure and providing more comfortable riding experience. And last but not least is, I want to know is there any material are better than polycarbonate to make this visor that can give more protection and function. Assalamualaikum everyone, my name is Sharifah Grisa, I'm from Section 2. Every week, I always wash my coat using this detergent capsule. As you can see, this thin plastic wrapping around this capsule is not just a simple plastic. This is actually made from polyvinyl alcohol. The vinyl alcohol is a repeating unit of vinyl alcohol. Some of the properties are film forming, water soluble, resistant to oil, and high tensile strength. So, how does it work? After we put it in the cold water, the water molecules will permit the outer layer. Then, the polymer chain will start to swell and break it down into smaller plastic particles called microplastic. After that, the detergent inside the capsule is released and spread in the water and forms a solution that can cleanse the coat. But how exactly polyvinyl alcohol is made? It is produced through the hydrolysis of polyvinyl acetate. By using a catalyst such as hydrochloric acid, this reaction will break on the acetic groups in polyvinyl acetate and will produce polyvinyl alcohol and acetic acid. Is there any other alternative than using polyvinyl alcohol? Yes, we have. We can replace it with polyvinyl pyrrolidone or polyethylene oxide. Since both of these polymers are also water soluble. Lastly, what I want to learn more about polyvinyl alcohol is can we make a product by using this polymer that are not water soluble? That's all for me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nikola Nidazlin Media Azrani. So this is my question question. This question is made by Yan. Pen is made by spinning fiber together to create a continuous strap. The pen can be derived from natural resource or synthetic material like nylon and polyester. The spinning process involves twisting and winding fiber together uh, using specialized machine called uh, spinders. Then, the thickness and the texture of yarn can be adjusted by differing the number of things per inch or by blending different types of fiber. Once yarn is fine, the yarn is ready to use. To compare, synthetic fiber is much more better than natural fiber. Synthetic fiber is much more lighter than natural fiber because it has lower density. Synthetic fiber is much more cheaper than natural fiber because natural fiber is hardly to access. The thing that I'm impressed is how can we recycle synthetic fiber because it is a non-biodegradable material. So that was all for me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Wan Johannes and today I'm going to be talking about animal paint. Animal paint is made up of metal. Metal is an inorganic substance which consists of metallic elements such as copper, iron and also zinc alloy. So, what is the properties of metal? Metal is opaque which means it is not see-through. It is also ductile and a very good electrical conductor. So, how is animal pins made? First of all, the metal will be melted and will be formed like liquid. So, the liquid metal will be put inside a cast mold and it will be molded and when it is cooled down, it will be hardened. So, the hardened metal will be put on special paint. So, that is how animal paints is made. So, why do we choose metal and not glass? For example, if I make glass animal paints, when it drops, it will be shattered. So, one thing about metal is that it's very hard when cooked. So, it's very hard to break. And also, it needs very high temperatures to be melted. So, it's very impossible in room temperature for that metal to be melted. So, um... One thing about metal that I'm very curious is that what is the most efficient way to avoid rusting? 
you know, when metal is reacted with oxygenated water, it will rust. So what is the most efficient way that we can do to avoid the material to rust? That's all from me. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Wan Adam and right here, what I have right here is an S6 retainer. These customized removable retainers are made of thin, clear medical grade plastic such as polypropylene that fits closely over your teeth. Now the way these things are made is a flat sheet of plastic material is heated to become pliable then vacuum suction to a positive model of patient's teeth. And the pros of this retainer is they are, is, are almost completely invisible makes, which makes it seamless when you wear it. And it also can be corrective as they can help move your teeth back in place if they shift slightly over time. And also prevent the premature wearing down of the teeth due to grinding at night during sleep. And, uh, and it is also not expensive to replace as other types of retainers. Now the cons of this retainer is they are not as durable compared to other types since they are made of plastic. It also can be extremely easy to misplace since due to their clear transparent nature and sometimes the plastic can discolor over time giving the teeth a yellow tint when wearing the retainer. Um, what I'm curious about this is how this material is strong enough that it can help move your teeth back in place and make it stay in place for a long period of time. That's all for me. Hi everyone, my name is Shaza. Today I will talk about toothbrush. Toothbrush is a tool that we all use in our daily life to maintain oral hygiene. The handle part of the toothbrush are made of plastic, which is polypropylene and polyethylene. The process of making the handle are called plastic injection molding. The factory will design the mold, the plastic pellet will be melted, and then the plastic pellet will be injected into the stainless steel mold with high pressure. The head part of the mold will have holes to fix the bristle in it. Most of the bristle that we can see nowadays is polyester, like polypropylene. But there's our natural bristle too, like bamboo bristle. Bamboo bristle have an excellent bacterial properties and it is ultra fine soft. It also have moisture resistance. Next, most of the hotel that we can see nowadays uh, provide a disposal toothbrush. The disposal toothbrush are usually made of propylene. They not only cheap, it have excellent mechanical properties, have low water absorption and low density. But why they are disposable to brush? Because they have poor elasticity, which will make it easy to deform. That's all for me. Thank you.